Lossless audio over USB-C is a hot new spec in the portable Bluetooth speaker market these days, but if you've seen any of my other videos, I'm the first guy to tell you that these things aren't meant for critical listening. So that got me thinking, what's the point then? If you're cranking music from a mono speaker at a campfire or while you're making dinner in the kitchen, are you really gonna be able to hear the difference between a lossless stream and a compressed stream? Probably not. But before we get into why this does or doesn't matter for Bluetooth speakers, let's go back to basics. First up, what is lossless audio? Well, lossless audio refers to music files that preserve all of the original audio data with no quality reducing compression. These files use formats like FLAC, Free Lossless Audio Codec, or ALAC, Apple Lossless Audio Codec, which is similar to FLAC, but designed to work seamlessly within, yep, you guessed it, the Apple ecosystem. As mentioned, these fancy codecs preserve all the original audio data, but the first thing to know is that only certain platforms like Apple Music and Tidal offer lossless audio. They simply promise better fidelity than an MP3 or AAC file. So what's the trade-off? Well, larger file sizes, but more importantly, you need the equipment that can actually reproduce those extra details in those extra large files. See where I'm going with this? Now, a few portable speakers have started offering this fancy sounding feature. The 2024 Beats Pill was among one of the first, and JBL followed with the Flip 7 and the Charge 6, making a big deal about their lossless audio support over USB-C. JBL's buzzwords and phrases even included when the music goes lossless, it gets that much better and claimed the feature was for real audio aficionados. I mean, really? Since when do real audio aficionados want their high res music played through a tiny mono portable Bluetooth speaker? So here's why it doesn't matter. Most portable Bluetooth speakers, especially compact ones like the Flip 7, the Charge 6 and the Beats Pill, are simply limited by their design. We're talking mono units with zero left to right separation, restricted dynamic range, and bass that's boxed in by their small enclosures. On paper, lossless support looks impressive, but in real world listening, you probably won't hear any meaningful difference between lossy and lossless audio, considering the size of those tiny drivers that they pack in there. If you want high quality audio, there are much better ways to experience it, but we'll get to that shortly. Take the Flip 7. It's a solid speaker for its size, but again, left to right width and instrument separation aren't its strengths. Tracks tend to sound like instruments are stacked on top of each other. You don't really get that sense of any space in between them. It's not exactly a nice home hi-fi setup now, is it? Like I said, if you've seen any of my other videos, I always remind people that these speakers are about convenience and durability. They're not designed for critical listening. They're meant for background tunes at the park or the pool, not for sitting down and analyzing a mix. So let's get back to real world listening here. At home, in a quiet environment, I tested the Flip 7 and the Charge 6 with Tidal, streaming lossless tracks like Pink Floyd's Time, Steely Dan's Peg, songs I know inside out. I used a high quality USB-C cable for the connection and compared it directly to Bluetooth. Unplugging the cable instantly switches the speaker back to Bluetooth, so A-B testing was pretty easy to do. And honestly, I just couldn't hear a meaningful difference. Maybe, maybe there was a slight bump in treble clarity, but even if there was, it was so subtle and hard to hear, in no way did it add to my listening experience. Heck, even if there was a bit more treble, you could probably just match that same sound using the built-in 7-band EQ in the JBL Portable app. Not so much for the Beats Pill because there is no EQ, but that's another video. If the wire connection had a small edge on sound quality, I certainly didn't find it significant by any means. Now, let's also consider the environments that we're using these speakers in. Listening at home with no distractions is one thing, but where are you normally using your Bluetooth speaker? In a boomy, concrete garage crushing beers with your pals? At a backyard barbecue with the chatter of your family and kids running around like it's spring break? On a recent camping trip, I had music playing beside a rushing river. Between that river, my friends talking, getting camp set up, the logs cracking in the fire, it's not exactly a soundscape that lends itself to appreciating reverb tales or the subtleties of stereo separation. These moments are about the vibes, not the quality of your stream. Sometimes good enough sound quality is just that, good enough. So if compressed formats like SBC are good enough for most people, when does lossless audio actually matter? The answer is simple. When you actually have the gear that can make use of it. This means high quality headphones, maybe even wired ones with a proper DAC. It means hi-fi speaker systems with real stereo separation and dynamic range, or a well-treated home theater where you can hear every detail in a film score. In other words, gear made for critical listening, not for carrying around in a backpack. 
I guess what I'm trying to say here is don't buy a Bluetooth speaker for lossless audio. Sure, it's a nice feature to have. Heck, any audio over USB-C is a nice feature to have, but it will never be a selling point for me. I do expect more brands will be pushing this as a feature, but really, you can't convince me it's not marketing fluff. It won't make your beach playlist sound any better. If you're after a Bluetooth speaker, just focus on the features that do matter. Battery life, durability, in my case, EQ options, and of course, don't forget to play some banging tunes from your endless summer 2025 playlist. Ow! For what it's worth, the Flip 7 and the Charge 6 are solid speakers, but not because they support lossless audio. If you want to know what features they do offer that make them worth buying, you can check out my full review on the Charge 6 right here, and the Flip 7 right here. Happy listening! I said, happy listening. Happy listening. Hachoo. Fake sneeze, gotcha. Oh, we need a better table.